So now we're going to talk about truth tables. These are incredibly important to implement systems and know what kind of function you will have to simplify for a certain desired output. So truth tables can explain um, functions as simple as logic gates or as complex as, say, the functioning of a vending machine. So definitely very important. So let's start with how do we create a truth table? The first thing I wanted to note is that we will start by labeling the, ver the inputs B and C, and then we're gonna count in binary, basically. The shortcut for this so that you don't have to like actually count in binary is that the, f the last place will always be, will always change after each ro row. So this will be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. And then B, twice that. So it'll be 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then A, it will need twice the amount of same digits. So it'll be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. I'm not going to do the whole um, table because it's pretty clear but yeah that's basically how you start creating your table and then once you have that you're gonna label the output and for the output it will either be asked that you determine the output or they will just simply give you an output so they could also say let's say a system needs both input B and C to be on that means that you're gonna put a 1 here but let's say it tells you that if A and C are on, then the system must be off. So you put a zero here, and since the must overpowers the B and C, you can change you have to change this to a zero. So that's kind of how you go around creating these tables. And later on we're gonna go into more details about it. But for now, this is a pretty good introduction to it. So now we're going to go over what do we do with the truth table once we have it. We want to get a function that is that represents f so that we can implement it using logic gates. Uh, remember from Boolean algebra when we have a function we'll have ands and ors which are logic gates and which we can create into a circuit that will give us this desired output. So Let's start with the simplest example that I have that I've prepared here and that is the two variable table. Right now we're going to look for f and to do so we have two approaches and you can choose either one. I would I'd recommend to stay consistent and use always the same one, but it's important to know because they might ask you a different format. So let me just show you what the options are. Sum of products and we have product of sums. So these two are pretty straightforward with kind of what we understand. The sum of products will basically be ors connecting ands. Let's call this h equals c. So that's an example of sum of products and the sum of them. So it's the same kind of theory with product of sums. And let's say we'll have an h here of the only thing that changes with binary is that we will be looking at different things for both of these systems. For sum of products, we will be looking at what is called min terms. The min terms are the product uh, terms. So that, let's say for this, for H, we have three min terms. And then for product of sums, we will be looking at what is called max terms which are just the additions. So this is a max term. So in H, we have two max terms. The most, the next most important thing that we are going to consider for that different for both of these scenarios is that for sum of products, we will be looking for ones in the function f. So we would be paying attention to these guys for its sum of products. And then for product of sums, we will be looking for zeros. 
So the next part that we have to pay attention to is that for sum of products, once we find a one term or a min term, so something else we need to pay attention to is that when we are looking for ones or we are using, so we are using the sum of products, we will be counting zeros as that variable's complement and we will be counting ones as the variable. So for example, if we look at the, the first one in this truth table, we will see that it is composed of a zero for A and a one for B. So our min term will become A naught and B. I hope that is clear. So for the second term, for example, we will have a is a 1 and B is a 0, so we will have A and B naught. So these are our min terms for that table. Once we have the min terms, the function will simply be those min terms added up or with an OR. So for example, A naught, B, or A, B naught. Now, for the product of sums, we will be looking for zeros, and we will be counting zeros as the variable and ones as the complement of the variable. So it is a little confusing, but that's why I, t I recommend sticking with one of them and just remembering how the other one works in case they ask you for it specifically. So for product of sums, let's look at the first zero. So this one, we will have A and B are zeros. So we are just going to have our first max term be A or B. Now we're gonna look at our second zero right here. And now we have A and we are both ones, so again we're counting ones as the complements, so we will have A naught or B naught. And then for the function, you are just going to multiply those max terms. Okay, so now I'm going to go over really briefly how to draw these with the logic gates. Uh, just because this one is pretty short and straightforward, it's a good idea to go over it. And also, I do want to mention this is an XOR gate truth table, so it'll be able to simplify to XOR, which I will go over in a little while. So what I like to do for drawing these circuits is to draw either the OR or the AND, so whatever is joining the terms, I will draw that, that logic gate first. And then I draw one logic gate that connects the terms per term. So here I have two terms and they are connected by an AND, so I draw two ANDs. And here there are two terms connected with a OR, so I draw two ORs. And then I connect them to the logic gate I drew first, and then I connect the inputs. So let's say this is a goes here, and then I'm going to do a not logic gate because we're using the complement, and then B, again the not logic gate. And here we'll do the same thing. And those are our circuits. So basically using IC chips, we could build this and get our desired output of F, which is really cool. So now what I want to show is that this specific truth table shows an XOR gate. So that just means that there will be a one output when only one of the inputs is one. So the XOR gate, XOR, 
is represented with a plus in a circle. So f can be written, in this case, can be written as a xor b. And the circuit can simply be drawn with one single logic gate. The xor logic gate, which looks like this, and inputs a and b. It's pretty useful for when you want to simplify your circuit, so it's just something to keep in mind that it exists and that we will most probably be using it in the future. So now let's go over our more complicated table. I think we are ready to do that. So first thing to do is to decide what system you are most comfortable with. I prefer to do the sum of products simply because it's easy to remember that you're going after the ones and considering that ones are the variable and zeros are the complements, it's just, it feels more natural to me. So I'm going to do that system for this, but we should end up with the same equivalent. So it won't look exactly the same, of course, but it will be equivalent to the product of sums. So our first step should be to find the ones in the system and write down their min terms. So we've got our first term will be a is a 0, b is a 1, and c is a 0. So we'll have a naught, b, c naught. We will have a is a 0, b is a 1, c is a 1. A naught, B, C. Then we also have A, B naught, B naught, C naught. And so let me just go through all of these if the concept is clear. Um, you can do it yourself and check your answer. So that should be it. A good way to check if we did this properly because it's especially confusing to you know locate the ones and make sure that you have the right amount so you should have the same number of terms as ones in the case of sum of products so here we have four five six seven eight so we should have eight terms so we're good now that we have the sum of products we're going to just say that the function is equal to the sum of all of these terms. So let me just write that down pretty quickly. Okay, so this function is definitely very, very large. We definitely want to simplify it, and we can simplify it with Boolean algebra. We can factor out, let's say here you can factor out a a naught and just go on from there, but that would be incredibly tedious. So later on, we're going to go over what is called k-maps. They are really great for simplifying these functions. A function that, you know, has eight terms just like this one can reduce down to something very, very simple. So I'll go over that in another video, but it's good to keep in mind that you don't have to worry. You won't like stay with this for the, you know, for every single function. So that's good to know. So that is pretty much everything there is to talk about truth tables. I hope it was helpful.